guys, Scott Gaylor, Tone Junkie Chronicles. I'm here today to talk to you about my thoughts on Dean guitars. Many of you will know Dean guitars for two different things, depending. The early 80s, late 70s, crazy classic Dean guitars, the Z, the V, making amazing, amazing instruments. Guys like Rick Emmett playing it. Of course, Elliot Easton having a signature model. The, the Cadillac, you know, the Steve from Def Leppard as well. Um, so many great guitars, unbelievable shapes, super amazing quality, zebra pickups, all sorts of cool stuff that just wasn't going on at the time. And it was really kind of the birth of the craziness. So Charvel was around that area. A uh, bunch of things started happening. Of course, Eddie Van Halen and the single hum revolution and all that. But the cool thing was is they made these great guitars, right? So you fast forward to we'll call it early 2000s and it's the big box era of Dean and unfortunately what the big box stores do a lot of the times not all of them but some of them is they'll cherry pick something and they'll get a couple specific colors and they'll just burn that into the ground and unfortunately that hurts brands and I don't care what the brand is I was talking to somebody the other day it could be any brand whether it be you know everybody thinking a Squire Strat is what a Strat is or an Epiphone is what a Les Paul is, that kind of stuff. Unfortunately for Dean, it became all about that pink and neon green guitar, that Christmas guitar, that 199 guitar that was junk. Let's, let's be honest, it wasn't very good. And unfortunately because of that, I think a lot of people got accustomed to that being what Dean was about. And then, of course, all the dime bag stuff. We all love dime. Dime's amazing. Not a bad thing to say about dime. But some of those guitars were okay, and for the money, there was other stuff that was probably a better price point thing. And yeah, you've got the you got a good pickup, but maybe you had to upgrade the Floyd or change parts out, and some of the finishes weren't always up to spec. But unfortunately, at that point, Dean then became the big box cheap brand, and this happened to BC Rich as well. BC Rich really took a beating with that, and then of course, that other idiot bought the right sim and ruined it even more. But then we'll call it the rebirth of Dean, which was last year. And Dean came out with this Select Series. And this particular guitar I'm holding is one of them. This is a Quilt Top Select Thoroughbred, or Thoroughbred Select Quilt Top FR. A lot of, you know, it's a lot of names and numbers to remember in that. So this is a thousand dollar price point. You can buy this guitar brand new in the store, a thousand bucks. And Real Seymour Duncan pickups, basically the equivalent of what would be a JB and a Jazz, I forget what they call them, they're made specifically for Dean in this, parchment top, El Nico magnets, uh, just great sounding inside this body, it's maple cap, Not this is not a veneer, this isn't a photo flame, this is a real maple quilt top, real mahogany body, real ebony board, and uh, Floyd Roy's FR1000, great block, everything works with it. The only thing I've done with it since I've gotten it is I've swapped the knobs out to like the Joe Bonamasso, Peter Green, Gary Moore thing. So when I have a four knob set up, I need to know what I'm grabbing and having two different knobs lets me know what pickup thing I'm going to. And I bumped this up. Um, I currently have my amp on standby because it was making too much noise. But when I tap, I would roll up and I would switch either the pickups or meet it. So now this is the bridge and this is the neck. It's, it's just something for tapping. It just makes my life easier. And of course I added a fret wrap and you can't see behind there, there is a fret wedge as well. So great guitar for the money. I was blown away by it so much that I ended up getting one and really excited about it. So I am telling you about this now because I have lived with this guitar now since before Summer Nam. Right before Summer Nam, they sent me this guitar um, already tuned down a half step what I like and the only thing I did with it when I got it originally was put some GHS strings on it because that's what I use and put a fret wrap on it because that's also what I use. I didn't switch anything out. What I'm doing for NAM though is I'm putting a Floyd Rose brass string claw or not string claw, spring claw. I am putting the noiseless springs in there, a stone tone 37 millimeter rock block with a copper uh, grounding strip and um, that little L blocked so I can lock it so it can only dive down if I want it to. And really that's for string change, just to make string changes easier. And I'm pretty excited about that. So I really wanted to talk about the guitar before I started making all those changes on it. And 
I'm telling you, man, it's just a great guitar. I, I really think the big boxes should jump on this if they're going to carry more of it and, and kind of bring the brand back to where it was. I mean, it was such an iconic brand, and it still is an iconic brand. It's one of the American builders. I mean, one of the cool things now is so every one of these guitars that leave the Dean factory in Tampa is set up. They're all set up in-house. So in other words, when they all the guitars come over on a container. Any, any sort of import guitar, Korea, Indonesia... China, wherever they're making, they come over on a container. When they go to the container, a lot of times these go to stores and you have problems. You're seeing all the issues you've been hearing about with certain brands and stores going out of business where they're having quality control because somebody's not there to set them up. These guitars go directly to Dean in Tampa. There's roughly 30 techs, I believe. Um, Evan or Vinny, please correct me if I'm wrong on that, but there's a large number of techs that go in and set up every one of these guitars before they go to the dealer. So the guitar that you're getting is already set up. comes with D'Addario strings. Again, I'm a GHS guy, but it does come with a great great quality string. You're ready to go. You, you have your Allen wrenches. You're using the bar. It's already there. You don't have to change anything. Like I said, I swapped out that for personal preference, and I swapped this out again just for feel. And I'm building all the other parts on it because this will be a guitar since I'm playing the Stone Tone booth at NAMM and I'm playing... Uh, the Floyd Rose booth at NAMM, this will be kind of a showcase guitar for them. So you want to see all the different things that they offer already on an instrument. So that's why I'm making the changes. But, man, such a great guitar uh, for the money. Uh, this is not a sponsored video. This is something I'm just doing on my own because I think now that I've sat with this guitar for... Uh, give or take almost a year now. I'm, I'm super impressed with it. I think bang for the buck, it's going to be tough to beat. There's a whole bunch of new ones coming out, similar price point. I'm actually going to get the next Tele. Has the uh, the amount of the the toggle switch on the horn, dual hums, the whole bit. So it's going to be pretty cool. I'm pretty excited about it. So again, I don't know what else to tell you, but definitely go check these out. Big bang for the buck. This is the Dean Thoroughbred Select Floyd Rose. Uh, there's multiple models. In this, there's a, there's a Z, of course, there's an ML, uh, and there's an Explorer. Uh, the V is amazing, the the Tobacco Burst. I, actually, it's not a Tobacco Burst, because it's kind of a quilt, but it's like a, a fire flame. It's amazing. Just great stuff. So, big shout-out to Dean and everybody at Dean. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, for everybody who's tuned into the channel, it's come to Tone Junkies. I'm doing a lot of new stuff this year, and I'm going to do a lot more video stuff. This is kind of my first vlog thing. So it's, it's a little all over the place, but I haven't done vlogs in so long, and I'm really, I wanted to have an excuse to show off my new haircut. I took like six inches of hair off, <laughs> and I wanted to try my new anamorphic lens tonight and see how that worked out. So, so far, so good. I hope you're having a great new year. I really can't thank you guys enough for all the love and support I've seen over the past decade, really. It's been amazing uh, being a solo artist now and doing all this stuff, and uh I will see you guys at Winter Nam. I will be performing at Keeley. I will be performing at GHS. I will be performing at Stone Tone. I will possibly be at a couple other places, but as of this shooting, nothing. The ink isn't dry, so I'm not going to say anything out loud. A lot of great surprises at the Stone Tone booth, and uh, maybe I might have a Dean Telly to mess around with while I'm at some of the things too. So hopefully, I'll see you all there. Peace, love, uh, respect, and I will see you all very, very soon. Scott Gaylor, Tone Junkie Chronicles. Peace.